Hi everyone, welcome to my channel again. Today I'm going to do another textured surface painting using tissue paper. I'm going to do it slightly different today and it worked out actually really well. For a change, I had the idea of using tissue paper but gluing it down with the Liquitex matte gel medium and it worked fantastically. I got a really, really flat surface after I did this. It dried flat as a board. Absolutely wonderful. So I'm using Canson watercolour paper. It's 300 GSM. Now you could use any heavy paper. 300 GSM would be the least heavy you should use. I've taped the paper down and I'm giving it a good thick coat of the matte gel medium and I've crumpled up the tissue paper. Make sure the tissue paper is bigger than your watercolour paper because when you do wrinkle it up like I did, it takes up some of the space and you want to make sure that that tissue paper covers the whole surface. I'm going to give it another coat of the gel medium and what that does, it seals the surface and protects the tissue paper and stops it from tearing when I paint on it. So make sure you cover it all very well and then leave it to dry. That's really important. Leave it for a few hours to dry and then it will be ready for painting on. So it's dry and I've given the surface a spray of plain water. Why I've, why I've done that is so that the uh, when I put the paint on, the watercolour, it will run a little bit and just merge with other colours. This is cobalt turquoise. Throughout the painting I'm using Daniel Smith watercolours. And with the sky I'm painting at an angle. So this is ultramarine blue. The brush I'm using is a Neef Squirrel Mix and it's a number 10. One of my favourite brushes. I'm painting with the board lifted up at the back so it's on an angle probably about a three inch height at the back. And that enables the watercolor to actually, the gravity to help it run down the surface of the paper and mix and mingle colors. I'm going to add some indigo that will give it a little bit of drama. There we go. Indigo is one of my favorite Daniel Smith colors. Now when you're painting, do make sure you get right to the edge of that surface. A little bit of a spray there. I feel as though I've put that indigo on a little bit heavy. So you'll see me now uh, start to just add more droplets of water soon and which will enable that colour to run. So that's just some clear water. Starting to get those runs happening. That's what I'm wanting. So this is quinacridone gold, another one of my favourite colours and if you've watched my other videos before you'll know that I use it a lot. Gorgeous warm colour. Again you'll notice I'm going down at an angle 
and I'm leaving the left side of the painting quite free of paint. A little bit of a spray there to help that paint just run again a little bit. So remember when I told you, make sure those edges are covered. That's what we're doing there. Fallow turquoise, another one of my favourite colours. Just on the horizon there and a little bit lower down. Mixed with the quinacridone gold, it makes beautiful greeny, bluey colours. Gives a sense of distance. What it's also doing is giving me a, a dark surface there for me to place the tree. This is indigo. So I'm not using a lot of colours in this painting. Pretty much the colours I've used already is what I'm going to use throughout the whole work. Again, spraying and tilting. I love those runs. So just tilt whatever way that you want the paint to run. Okay, time to start putting this witching tree in. So I grew up in the north of England in a, in a city called Lancaster. Well known for the Lancaster witches and favourite pastime on the weekends with my parents was walking down the country lanes there. There's one particular tree we used to call the witching tree. It was quite creepy and as children we used to there's a witching tree and run past very quickly. So an old and ancient tree. Quinacridone gold and a little bit of indigo on the side. Because it's so wet, I'm not drying this painting, it's all working wet on wet. Working wet on wet enables the colours to mix and mingle. And it's still very wet, that surface. Starting to put a few of those roots in, the exposed roots. And just using the painting, the paintbrush rather very, very freely. Did you notice how I'm holding this brush throughout the whole painting? I'm holding it towards the top of the uh, handle, um, not near the bristles, and it gives you a lot more freedom of movement. And I stand up when I'm painting. It's easier to move your arms when you're standing up. This is an ink tense pencil, and it's in ink black. Now, it's very similar to a watercolour pencil, so you could definitely use a watercolour pencil if you don't have an ink tense pencil. And again, using that pencil uh, on the very end, you'll see how I'm holding it, and I'm rolling the pencil as I, uh, as I draw. And using those wrinkles in the surface and that really helps when you're drawing over it to um, have freer lines. Just adding some really fine loose branches all going in the left hand direction at the moment. So because the surface is wet, the pencil um, does grab and the colour is much stronger than drawing on a, on a dry surface. 
You can see here that I'm adding some work to the tree trunk and very very loosely exploring the roots of the tree here. Now I'm doing some splattering. When I splatter in my artworks I generally use the colours that I've already used in the painting. In this case I'm using the quinacridone gold and I'll come in and use some of the fallow turquoise and possibly even the indigo here as well. Get those darks in there. Here we go with a bird. I'm just using the indigo here. Now I do have a a paintbrush that was a bit annoying, it had a little hair sticking out of the side of it, so uh, you'll have to bear with me when I'm correcting this little bird as I go. See that? Anyway, I managed to cope and got some sort of bird out of it. Now when it comes to the beak, sometimes with my birds I'll use a outline drawing system pen just a fibre tip pen, but in this case I did stick with a brush and use the brush. But a little tip there that if you haven't got a really fine brush, you can just use an outline drawing system pen in the black. That really helps get those fine details. Make that tail a little bit longer, just balance out the bird. You'll also find that when you're painting with the indigo or a really dark colour on a white surface, you may need to come back and do two coats. We're going to put a bird in the tree here and you can feel me, see me feeling the surface with my finger. And I'm just checking to make sure it's not too wet. It is damp, but um, if it's too wet, the paint is just going to bleed out like blotting paper. Whoops, it fell off its little um, stand that I had it sitting on and um, we'll get that right for you so that you can see what I'm doing. Just indicating a bird on the branch. We're almost there. Just a bit of um, tidying up to do, a little bit more detail with that pencil. A little bit more detail on that tree trunk. And I've decided I was going to use those lovely crinkles on the right hand side just to put in a few more branches. So I've just added some indigo here. Uh, very good um, loose amount on the brush so that when I'm dropping the paint in it will run. And I'm tilting the board you'll notice. Making sure that branch goes right to the edge of the painting there. And I'll do a little blot with tissue in a moment just to fade some out, make them look a little bit in the distance. There we go, just fading those ones out a little bit. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, just strengthen up some of those branches by putting a puddle of paint on there and again the indigo and just letting that run. A 
I'll be picking up some quinacridone gold in a moment and adding some of that too, just to warm those branches up a little bit. There you go. Remember just to tilt the board uh, to make the paint run the way that you want it to. Just a little bit of quinacridone gold on those right hand side branches. Here I'm just checking the painting just to see if it needs any more work. Quite often I'll just put the painting to one side where I can see it over a few days and keep looking at it to decide whether it needs anything else. And I think that's a really good tip because quite often you don't notice things when you're just looking at the painting when you're actually doing it. But after looking at it for some time you might say, oh it needs a bit more of this or it needs a bit more of that. So here we are, uh, the finished painting, and look what a difference it makes when you put a mat board or a mount board around the work. It makes a massive difference. Really love this painting. I hope you've enjoyed watching. Uh, I'm going to show you some close-ups here of the beautiful texture in the work. I would love it if you like the video uh, for you to look at some more of my videos and definitely hit that subscribe button because that does help me and my channel. And um, thank you for watching. I've really enjoyed coming back and I will be making some more videos for you. Thanks again. And bye for now.